Oh, hi there. I'm curious about something. You know, when God looks at you, does he see a good person? Will you go to heaven? No, really, seriously. When God looks at you, are you good? Yes, you're the one I'm talking to. Are you a good person? This is a serious question. You know, God has given us his Ten Commandments. That's his laws. But what about you? Do you follow all of them perfectly? You know, we're all going to die. But the question is, will you go to heaven? Oh, one more thing. Have you ever lied or smudged the truth? Let's see what other people say about that. I used to lie a lot more. Oh, everybody lies. You know, we can't help it. We just, we like to seal the truth just to protect ourselves. <laughs> I'm sure we've both lied before. Yes, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, me too. Yes, I've lied before, but just little ones. It's been no big deal, like little white lies. It's my habit to lie. Have you ever lied before? Maybe you've had a neighbor that owned a car like this. And it had some problems, and, you know, your neighbor got bored with fixing and because it's got transmission problems, and it's got starter problems, and he just wants a new car. He says, I'm tired of the fixing the old one. I've spent so much money in it. Let me just slap a for sale sign on there. You know, $5,000. But what's worse, on that sticker, he adds two words. It says, good condition. So you come along and you say, oh, look at this car. I like it, man. I, I think I could buy this thing. And so you ask your neighbor, so is this a good car? And he says, sure, everything's fine. So do you mind if I take it for a test drive? So you drive it around the block or two, and you know, you're deaf, so you can't hear any problems with the engine, and you don't know the transmission's you know, strange and the starter. So you decide to go ahead and pay him cash, and you own it. But a few days later, it just breaks down. And here you spend all this money, $5,000, and now you got to pay another couple thousand dollars to get the transmission starter fixed. So do you think your neighbor was an honest person? Of course not. So what would you call him? It'd be a liar. He deceived you. So a person like that, would God allow a person like that to go into heaven, a liar? You know, in the book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 8, you know what that says? It says, all liars will be thrown into the lake of fire. So, let's be honest. Be honest with yourself. Do you sometimes cover over the truth, lie about things, maybe tell a half-truth? You know why we do that? Because we're trying to protect ourselves. We don't want to get in trouble. But it's still a lie. So let me ask you, are you guilty or innocent? Oh, one more thing. I've got to ask you this. Have you stolen before? Let's see what some other people say about that. Oh, I used to steal a lot. My father was so rich, and of course I couldn't help it. He left the money on the table, I'd just take it. Oh, stealing is a way of life. Come on. You could go to jail for stealing. Oh, no, I do it a smart way. I'm a smart person. Yeah, sometimes I see food in the bowl at night. You know, my dad and mom are sleeping. I just eat the food, whatever's there. Oh, sure, I've stolen before. One time I went into a store and I took some candy. It was really close to the entrance. Why not? I'm good at it. 
Let's be honest. You know a lot of people steal. Maybe you've done it too. Maybe your father or mother had something you stole, or your friends had something you really wanted, and you just took it. Or maybe you've gone into a store and you wanted to buy something, you paid the money, but the cashier gave you too much change. So what do you do? Keep it or give it back? You know, most people just keep it. Or maybe you go to the store because you want to buy a new TV. So you look around and say, oh, on sale, yes. Oh, you like that? Wow, $350, it's widescreen. So you take it up to the clerk and you pay for it. And the clerk punches in $50. So what do you do? Do you tell them, oh, no, no, that's not the right price? Or you just walk out with it and thrilled because you saved so much money? You know, maybe you think, well, it's a worker, her fault. She punched in the wrong number, blame herself. Or maybe you think, you know, God, thank you so much. I was supposed to pay 350 and I only had to pay 50 Praise Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Is that your attitude? You just accept that? But that would be called being a thief. You know, we all have a law, and that law is, thou shalt not steal. I know there's a friend of mine, he was a police officer, and he told me lots of stories, but one I remember, this story about a man that he arrested, because he stole a little piece of candy, you know, just like this. And you think, oh, what's that? No big deal. But the judge says, it doesn't matter. You broke the law, you're a thief. So what did the judge do? He fined him $150 and he had to spend one night in jail. And the judge told him the reason for that. He says, it doesn't matter whether the value is big or small, you're still a thief. Wow. You know, as I got thinking about this, what about God? Would he accept a thief to go into heaven? You know, you've got the Ten Commandments. He's the one that wrote them. And number eight says what? Thou shalt not steal. But what about you? Are you a thief? Are you guilty or innocent? Think about it. Oh, I've got one more question for you. Have you ever committed adultery? Let's see. Oh, men can't help but doing that. I really like looking at a guy who's got a dark tan and six-pack and muscles. Oh, many times. I just have to be honest. I have looked. I haven't done anything about it. I like to look, but I don't touch. I just like looking. Oh, yeah. If I see a beautiful woman, man, I raise my sunglasses and I enjoy looking. I can't help it. You know, my eyes just naturally go to that beautiful figure. I'll take a look at somebody. Oh, I like it, but I don't touch. I don't do anything about it. You know, that was really interesting. Suppose a woman comes near you and you see her and you start looking up and down her and immediately in your mind you start thinking what would she look like with no clothes on oh you'd be lusting already but you know today it is so easy to access things like that internet pornography pictures movies you know a lot of guys just enjoy watching that stuff like even in your own home maybe get a remote and you rent a movie and and, oh, nobody's there, and it's a pornographic movie, and you just start watching it. Even in the bookstores, you know, we can go and see all the magazines, the, the dirty magazines there, you can just leaf through that and, and lust after the pictures. It's so easy to do today. But, you know, Jesus made a statement that says, anyone who lusts after woman has already in his heart committed adultery. So, really, what this means is that when we think about these things in our mind and, and think about a woman with no clothes on, we've already committed adultery. It doesn't matter whether you haven't even touched her, you haven't had sex with her, you haven't laid with her, but it's just lust. Wow. Now, suppose I've got this little mach electric machine and 
uh, very high-tech machine that has lines and probes and can stick on your head, and we record all your thoughts for an entire week and make a movie of it. Would you be interested and say, hey, family, friends, come on, watch the movie of all my thoughts for all week? Would you accept that or not? You know, in the book of Psalms, chapter 44 and verse 21, it says, all of your thoughts that you think are private, but God knows them all. So I'm wondering about you. Are you guilty or innocent? You know, so far, we've talked about liars, thieves, and adulterers. But maybe you're thinking, oh, yeah, I've done all three of those. I've been guilty. But maybe you're thinking in the back of your mind, oh, but there's one more. I'm still okay because there's one I haven't broken. I haven't killed anybody yet. I'm still safe. Is that true? You haven't killed anybody yet? Let's see. No, I haven't killed anyone. I've been so angry I wanted to kill somebody. Oh, just strangle him, but I never did. Why wouldn't I get into heaven? I haven't killed anyone. Well, I tell you, my brother, he makes me so mad I feel like choking him to death. Let's suppose you're driving along in pretty heavy traffic, and all of a sudden, some jerk pulls right in front of you, and you got to slam on your brakes to keep from hitting him. Man, are you boiling mad. So what do you do? You pull in front of him and do the same thing. Got him back. Or maybe you're talking with some guy, and they just really insult you terribly. You say, fine, you insult him right back. Or maybe you're chatting with somebody and they insult you and you just accept it and you keep thinking about it. Then you get later with your friends and you just say, you know what so-and-so did? And you tell them all about it and stab that guy in the back. Or maybe you grew up and there's something that happened in your background that just left a terrible scar in your life and you just never can forget it. And you hate that person because of it. But let me tell you, God has written in his word in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 15, this verse, and it says, A person who hates another person, the one who hates is the same thing as a murderer. You can see this again in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 23, where Jesus himself says, The person who's angry against another person, they are the same as a murderer. And that's exactly true. So even if you don't have a gun or a knife, but still that anger, that hatred is the same thing as murder. And God is watching you. Are you angry? Do you hate people? Then you're the same as a murderer. You know, the things you think about in our mind and our heart, and we think, boy, I want to revenge against that person, how he treated me. You know, I got to let you know you're guilty of murder. So let me ask you, are you guilty or innocent? Well, if we're talking about the Ten Commandments, I don't know. Well, I'm a good person. It's impossible to follow all of those commandments. How is a person supposed to do that? So what about you? We've seen so far these four different commands. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And thou shalt not kill. All four of those laws are part of God's laws. And we call those what? The Ten Commandments. Now God expects you to perfectly obey all of those Ten Commandments. Can you do that? I don't think so. That's impossible. You know, you've already broken these four that we've talked about. You, that proves you're in rebellion against God. So what does this mean? Can you go to heaven? That's impossible. So then where would you go? You'd go down to hell. So let's think about this. Maybe you're saying, well, it's okay. Nobody's perfect. Or maybe you're thinking, I see so many other people. They're worse than me. I, I'm pretty good compared to them. 
Or maybe you're thinking another thought. Well, God understands who I am. He'll, he'll forgive me. I'll be all right. Are you sure about that? God will forgive you for all that? Let's show you what that would look like. Watch this. So I'm here at my favorite restaurant. Oh, my family comes here a lot of times. So why do we choose this place? Well, the service is friendly, the food is delicious, and it's a comfortable environment, family-style restaurant. I just love this place. The food is so good, and I can't wait for my food. Wait a minute. What in the world is... Why is she giving me a dirty plate? That is not a clean plate. I'm not going to eat food off of this plate. Come on, please get rid of that, would you? Oh, you got to be kidding me. She used a towel? You know, that towel she probably used to clean all the other tables, and now she tries to clean my plate with that? Now it's worse. You think I'm going to eat off that plate? No way. You wouldn't do it either, would you? Now, you know, this is just like a person. God is watching you. You know, the outside of us looks pretty good, but God is looking on the inside and what does that look like? Just like this dirty spot on this plate. You know, really, inside our heart is full of sin and rebellion against God. It's really terrible. Can we clean ourselves up? No way. But I've got news for you. Maybe you can go to church and do some good things. Do you think that'll help clean your, in, your heart up? No, that's not going to do it. Or what about religion? If I follow all the rules, get involved in my religion, is that going to help clean your heart up? No, that won't do it either. What about the people out there that really struck and need your help and you go and volunteer to help them? Is that going to clean your heart up? No, that won't do it either. But maybe I can get enough points and then God will let me into heaven. That won't work. So how can I get my heart clean? There's only one way and God can help you with that. But how? Well, God knows that in your heart is dirty, and you need to have a completely new heart, and he knows how to do it. So let me explain a little bit more about this. First, let me show you this story. Thank you very much. Wow, look at this, a clean plate. Now I'm ready to eat. Here we are in a courtroom. A judge is supposed to arrive any time now to start these proceedings. But what has recently happened is they've got a man by the name of Brian Vincent Graham. Do you know what he did wrong? He went into a store with a gun and robbed it, but then they arrested him. So now he's got to beg before the judge for mercy. But I've got to be honest with you, what he needs is grace. So the judge is coming right now, so let's be quiet and watch. All rise. The Honorable Judge Taylor presiding. And the court is in session now. Be seated. Sit down. Be seated. Ready for a new day? Yes, sir. The state of Illinois versus Brian Vincent Graham. Brian Graham. Hmm. Hey, was it man in my courtroom before? Yes, Your Honor. He's been caught three times, but here he is again on three charges. Again? The charges 
are armed robbery, aggravated assault, and use of a deadly weapon. Huh? What? Illinois had three strikes, and you're out. If you're guilty, you go to jail. What you feeling? Are you guilty or not guilty? My client pleads not guilty, Your Honor. Okay. Let let the court begin. Call your first witness. The court calls Officer Haynes. Please come forward. Officer, are you prepared to give testimony about how you arrested Brian Vincent Graham? Yes. Please proceed. On the evening of November 23rd, I got a dispatch that there was armed robbery in progress. So I pulled over to got, get the full description, and I heard there was a gentleman with blue jeans and a ski mask and a gray T-shirt that had robbed a 7-Eleven store. So I was nearing the corner of Harlem and 16th, and I was driving there, and I noticed right away this black Cadillac comes zooming past me. So right away I did a U-turn and started chasing that car. And he was going fast, 100 miles an hour. I was trying to catch up to him, but he kept trying to get away. Finally, I pulled the car over and got the guy on the ground. Please proceed. So I got his handcuffs on, put him in the squad car, and went back to investigate. And there I found an automatic 45, that blue ski mask, and money in that brown bag. Is that person in this courtroom right now? Yes, his name is Brian Vincent Graham, and he's right here. Do you have anything to say? Your Honor, Brian Graham is out of a job. He's had no job for two years, but he's got a wife and four children. He has no house to live right now. They all live in a car. So I'm asking the court, please, for mercy. I wish I could show you mercy. But law is clear. Illinois law has three strikes. And you're out. I'm stuck. I must punish you to light in prison. Your Honor, I beg of you for his children and wife's sake. Law is law. No possible mercy. Mr. Graham, this, this court declared you guilty under law. Punishment must be paid. Court cannot accept anything less than, than, than you going to jail. Who is this man? What's he doing in my courtroom? My name is Mark Graham. This is my brother. I have no wife, no children. I live in a nice house. But I've noticed you can't show my brother any mercy. But I'd like to ask you, is it possible somehow for me to take his place? Grace? Yes, Your Honor, I would like to play, take the place of my brother. I will go to jail in his place. I'm a rich man, and I've got a home and a car. I've got money in the bank. I can take care of all of his medical needs. And so he can use my home, live in my car. I can pay off all of his debts and take care of his wife well. So I'm just thinking if I would go to jail and he would be free, and he wouldn't steal anymore, would the court accept that? Law will be satisfied. Yes, I can offer grace. But in order to make this happen, your brother must be willing to accept your offer.
Did you see what just happened there? Brian was completely guilty. Did he deserve mercy? No. Did he deserve grace? No, he didn't. He should have gone to jail right away. But imagine, here was his brother that stepped forward and is willing to go to jail in his place. Wow. That is what we call grace. But how do you feel? How would you feel if someone came forward and went to jail in your place? That's the same idea with us. We have all rebelled against God. We've broken his law. We don't deserve to go to heaven. Where do we deserve to go? Right to the eternal jail, hell. But I want to let you know today that there's one person by the name of Jesus Christ. He is perfect. He's innocent. He has never sinned. And yet, God, who should punish you, was willing to allow his own son to take your place. So what does that look like? Well, Jesus told his father, I'll be glad to take their place. I'll take away their sin. Can you imagine that? That is what true grace is. God loves you so much. He gave his son so he would accept your own sins and the punishment for it. He died in your place. Let me tell you, yes, Jesus died, but he also rose again and he conquered death. So now, what about you? What are you going to do? Are you willing to be humble and honestly tell God you're sorry and turn to him in repentance? What does this mean, the sign for being sorry? What it means is we're honest with God and said, yes, Lord, I've done all these terrible wrong things. I've rebelled against you. I've sinned, and I'm sorry. That's what it means to turn back to God, to repent, to change your way of living. No more the wrong way, the sinful way. I turn to God and follow you only. It's very important that during your life, you submit yourself to God and follow him. Let him become the Lord of your life. Now, in the Bible, in the book of 2 Corinthians, in chapter 5 and verse 17, there's a statement that written that says, all these things are forgiven you, and God gives you a new heart, makes you a new person. So here you are, a new person, now connected with God through Jesus Christ. That is what you call grace. That's wonderful. Under the law, you are guilty, and you must go to prison for the rest of your life. I cannot, under law, show you any mercy. I can't. But your brother is willing to offer himself to satisfy the law. He offered himself to satisfy the law, and not only that, his house, his money, golly, this is a gift from him to you. Do you accept this? Court declares you innocent. Please go. Never appear in my courtroom again. Mark Graham. I pronounce you guilty and punish you to life in prison without parole.
God has already shown us the way to heaven. And Jesus Christ is the only one who can get us there. Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Are you following him? This recent dramatization of the courtroom scene that you saw, did that really happen? Of course not. Was that judge a real judge? No, he wasn't. But you realize that your life here in this world will soon be gone. Right now, your heart is beating, but there will come a time where it will stop and you will die. But then what's going to happen? You'll have to face God in heaven. You stand before him, realize that is a real courtroom. That is a real judge. God himself is the judge. And as you stand before God, the big question is, are you guilty or innocent? So maybe you're thinking right now, well, what do I have to do to make this change? You realize you're going to have to stand before God and you understand you have to be sorry for your sins and change. But what would that look like? I'll tell you what, let me show you what that's like. First, I'll say a prayer to God and then you can click the remote and pause it. And then you can pray directly to God yourself. Then when you finish that, push play again and I'll explain more, all right? So watch me. Oh God, it's me. And I realize that all my life I've been rebelling against you and I'm so sorry. I've sinned all these different ways and I admit it, I did all those terrible things and I'm so sorry. But God, right now, all those things that I've been involved in before, I don't want to anymore. I turn to you. Lord, I give my life to you. I submit myself to follow you. I want you to become my Lord. And whatever you lead me to do, I want to do it. I want to follow you what you want. I want to follow you. I want to be close to you. And Lord, I'm sorry for all my sin. I turn to you and ask Jesus to come into my life. Give me a new life, a new heart. Help me to be motivated to serve you. So now, it's your turn. All right, so did you recently pray to God? So what are you going to do now? Do you want to learn more who this person by the name of Jesus Christ is? I'd encourage you to go to a church, be involved in a church. It's very important that the church you choose is a church that really follows Jesus Christ as the only way to heaven. It's very important that you learn more about him through his word, the Bible. The person who gave you this DVD, why don't you try to let them know that you prayed this? Or maybe you know another Christian friend, you can contact them and let them know what you recently prayed. Or maybe there's a deaf church that's near you, you can get in contact with them. Or you can always contact us here at DVC. We'd be more than glad to help you find a good church that's close to you. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to you going to heaven with us forever. But remember, it's very important that you follow Jesus. He's the only way to heaven. Thank you.